and we were very poor at the time, and um, so I did, really didn't expect to get it. And, uh, but Christmas came around, and there was the guitar. And uh, of course I was thrilled, and um, the first four chords I learned were D, A minor, E minor, and G. And with these four chords I wrote this little kid's song really, it was, uh, it was really just a, a sort of medieval fantasy. I never wrote it down on paper, I, I just somehow I just remembered it in my head. And it was actually many years later when, uh, when we were at the end of making the first ELP record. And um, you know we, we were actually, we had one day left at the studio and we were one track short of the completed album. And nobody had any more material. So I said, well look, I mean, if there's nothing else, I've got this little folk, folk song I wrote when I was a kid. So Keith said, okay, then, you know, why don't you play it? Let's have a listen. So I played it, and, uh, but, but no one liked it. And uh, <laughs> so I said, well look, the thing is, is what are we gonna do? Because we're one track short, and We've got nothing else. So Keith said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you record it on your own? And I'll go down the pub. <laughs> so, uh, so I thought, that, okay, you know. So Carl Palmer and I actually recorded the initial track. And uh, it sounded pretty dreadful. It was just drums and acoustic guitar, and it was very clattering. But then I put a bass on it, and it sounded a bit better. I put some more guitars on, and then I put the, vo the vocals on and the electric guitar solo, and it actually then it sounded like a, a more or less a complete record. And uh, eventually Keith came back from the pub, and he came into the studio, and we played it, and he was really shocked when he heard it. And he said, wow, I, I think I'd better play on that. <laughs> and uh, so I said, okay. So the thing is, I said, I've, I've already done the, the solo, so, the only place really that's left is, is if you put something on the end. He said, I'll tell you what, I've just had this instrument, new instrument delivered. Um, it's next door, it's a Moog synthesizer. Maybe there's a sound on there that would be good, you know. So I said, okay, let's, uh, you know, give it a try. So he went out into the studio and started experimenting. There's this effect called portmento, it's you play a low note, and then you play a high note, and it swoops you, boom. And you can control the amount of time it takes. So he said, well, let's run the track and um, I'll experiment and see how it goes. Well, just the same as the story I told you about, Gary, I, I, I flipped it into record and pressed play. And because he was only experimenting, I actually put speakers on dim. And Eddie Offord, the engineer and I, were sort of talking as he was experimenting. When it got to the end of the track, I said to Eddie, Eddie, was it me, or did that sound good? <laughs> and Eddie said, I think it sounded good. Let's play it back. So we played it back, and that is the solo that's on the, on the album. And so I called, I called Keith on the, on the talk back, and I said, you know, Keith, you really should come and hear this. It's a wonderful solo. And he said, no, 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 I, I, I could do a much better one. I heard, I said, really? I don't think you could. <laughs> uh, you know, perhaps you would like to just come in here. And after a lot of persuasion, he came in. And uh, of course, once he heard it in context, that was it. It was game, set, and match. And, um, and so that was it, really. And uh, so anyway, I'd like to play uh, my version of that song tonight. Here's Lucky Man for you. Woo!